Welcome. This is a little part of your world, according to Flint. As I said, joining me on this episode, the one and only six-time world champion saddle bronc rider, Montana native. Longtime friend, I guess. I'll call you. Oh, from my side, you're a friend. The one and only Dan yeah. Mortensen. Good to see you, but I never Thank see you. you anymore. I know, and you... I think you're even living around here. Right, now, yeah, so. we're close <laughs> yeah. now. I should I'll call I'll come over. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> we were uh, we had a discussion before we came on the air. My girls were were the same age, basically yeah. uh, pretty same, much. We'll, we'll same. There, we're yeah. within 11 months of each other. My girls are 21, 19. You finally <laughs> you waited a long time. Maybe not by choice, but your life went a long time, but now you have your kids are small. They're little, yeah, and I love it. You have, tell us your kids. Uh, Joy is six. She'll be seven in June. Uh, Julie is five, just turned in March. Mm -hmm. And Caleb is three. Uh, January 1st, he turned three. So uh, make you old or keep you young? What is it? Uh, A little of both at times. Yeah. I love it. Um, You know, I'm fortunate that that I get to be home now and Mm -hmm. and, uh, enjoy them and you know, I rodeoed with guys, Rod Hay, mainly, that had kids. He had kids young, you know, and, and just seeing the, the struggles of having to leave them. Yeah. And, you know, the daddy don't go. And and he's in your position now. Yeah. Like his boy is, is rodeoing and doing really well. A stud. Dawson yeah. is Dawson. quite a, quite a <laughs> bronc and, rider. And kicking butt. Yeah. And, uh, and I, you know, that slowed Rod down, too. And it would have, like... I, I say I, there's no way I could have done achieved what I did in rodeo had I had kids earlier. There's no yeah. way. I uh, I tell my kids jokingly that jobs and kids screw up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Overrated. So uh, I, I do want to say, and I told you I'd tell this story. It was 1984. I figured back and figured the year. In 1984, the state high school rodeo, you would have been a fresh, I think it was your freshman year of high school. Cause I was a sophomore. So it'd been the summer of 84. I think it might've been. In you Kalispell? were a freshman. Yeah. It was in Kalispell. It got moved to Carpenter's arena. Yeah. Remember some, it was supposed to be somewhere else. And oh, I didn't happened. know it was supposed to be somewhere else. I just read that somewhere. Really? And a, a friend of mine, we were screw offs. I was not competing at the state high school rodeo. My dad was announcing. My mom was timing. My brother Pete was Bulldog and team roping and in the bull riding that year also. So we're wandering around behind the chutes. This friend of mine, Brett Allen was his name. He's from Augusta. We thought we were pretty cool. And we look and warming up. We stop. I hit him. I said, look at this. Here's this little dude. Black rim glasses, high water pants, old shirt, warming up his bull rope on the fence. And I said, this kid's going to get killed. Because <laughs> then we're some big bulls, some big, bad bulls. <laughs> we're big, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, it was you, and I had no idea. Later that night, you come out and just stick it on some. I, I We stood there, and we looked at each other and said, we're stupid. <laughs> but you weren't very big. No, I. so I would have been, that was my freshman yeah. year, and I wrestled. So back then, I was still in at junior high in Lockwood. Oh, okay. Like I hadn't gone to senior yet. And I think I wrestled 78 pounds that year <laughs> and wasn't even close to maxing out the weight deal. Yeah. You know, like I was, I probably weighed 72 pounds or something. Was that, I, that was the only event you were in. Yeah. It was and, bull riding. And, uh, and, and an interesting fact, I think there were 72 bull riders or something. Yeah. It was crazy. And yeah. I was the only guy to ride two bulls huh. and ended up winning. I was a, state or high school state champion my freshman year riding bulls because i was the only one to ride two there what a, did you what'd you do the rest of high school in the board did you win it every year a no, couple of times I, one year would have been my junior year um the f- high school state finals was in lewistown and i had a bull yeah, i remember flip on me and mess my arm up Oh, they, okay. They I actually was, I actually was in the state high school rodeo that year. <laughs> <laughs> but the other three years I did, I won the yeah. state um, bulls. And then my senior year was when I started riding Bronx and I won the Bronx ride in that senior year. See, that was what I never remembered in high school. If you were, if that happened at college or if, if you had started riding Bronx in high school, but I would have been gone. So that 
because I'm older than you in yeah. grade. But so just I, one year, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I but, started riding Bronx like that last year. And you were okay at it? Uh, I struggled. Yeah. Like for quite a while riding Bronx. Um, well, that's because you got so big. You were up to what, 105 pounds? <laughs> yeah. <by that> time. <laughs> uh, I think I got on 18 head before I ever made the whistle on well, one. And it was at like Scoby. They had them three Highline rodeos, plenty yeah. of Flaxfield and Scoby. And it was the first one of the bunch. And I uh, went up there and I think Larry Wortman or something had the stock. Yeah, and I oh, go back right, right. and I'm looking at looking at the horses and there's this draft horse back there that just towers Wirtz. above everybody. I think it was Wirtz. Larry Wirtz. Larry yeah, Wirtz. Yeah. And there's this huge horse back there and I am like scared to death. I rode bulls, <laughs> no problem. But then Bronx, because I just kept getting drilled. Like everyone had lawn dark. Well, me. when when you start riding saddle bronx, it's inevitable that for a long time the first thing to hit is your head. Oh, it's yeah. It's just the way just, I've dislocated both shoulders doing that. Like you just get lawn darted. <laughs> But I, I see this horse, and I'm like, oh, my God, I hope I don't draw that. Well, that's what I draw first one. And Larry comes up to me, and he's like, now, this horse is really well broke, so you need to throat latch him and stay off his head. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he turns out and has about two hops. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that was my first one where I made the whistle. Because you wowed him. <laughs> Heck, yeah, I wowed him. <laughs> And then I'd kind of cluck and we'd go a little bit. Whoa. And wow, the three that. rodeos, I won a coat because I was the only guy to cover a horse at all three rodeos. And that was the only one. So I you won a jacket. I won the average. I won a jacket, everything. <laughs> That was my first win in the uh, South Bronx, right? You know, so you started there. And I remember us talking about a lot of people think, you know, you're known for being at Montana State because that's where you finished college. But... And so John Larrick was the coach there, yep. great saddle bronc rider and great coach. But really at, at Powell, Wyoming at Northwest, it was really Ike Sankey that kind of turned the corner for you. And definitely. Yeah. Did, did you? And it was, it was not only, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 go. Yeah. You're, it wasn't you're only, my guest. It so. wasn't only Ike, but it was Rod Hay yeah. went to school there and he came in the second semester. So I had already been there um, like half the year. And I got recruited as a bull rider. Though that was what I was going to ask is yeah. if you were still riding bulls at college. Oh, definitely. I yeah. rode bulls all through the college. Yeah. But so, and then Rod came in halfway through and he was a stud. Like the guy just yeah. rode amazing. Yeah. I actually recruited him sight unseen, gave him a full ride. And I was there like on a books and tuition scholarship. Well, that's because when he gave you your scholarship, Ike Sankey thought it was his own money. So he yeah. wouldn't give you any. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> um, but he, uh, you know, reading a story of, of you and kind of your college career, I will say, I think our lives and careers parallel each other a little bit. We're the same age. We're the youngest of four. Although you have three sisters, were you spoiled rotten? No, definitely not. Not at all. No. It, three si your three sisters didn't spoil. They, you were you weren't there. No. They weren't protective of you. No. They kicked your ass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. I was, <laughs> kind, of a, I was kind of a loner. That's why I, I'd get home from school and I'd head out to the corral and play with the horses and stuff. And yeah. I didn't spend a whole lot of time inside. Um. But we're the youngest. And of my four. education showed it at that time too. Yeah. Not not good. Yeah, not good. Were you not a good like high school? Not no, a, I hated high school. It's the worst three years of my life going to senior high. Really? Yeah. It's funny how people's. I loved high school. Some people do, could care less about yeah. high school. And you were a high school teacher. Uh, yes, I was for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. True. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate. I mean, people ask, "Oh, you quit teaching?" I just had something else in mind. Yeah. No, so, definitely. you know, I remember I, when I was traveling with Jess Martin, he was saying you were an RA I, I, I was in the R dorms at, at Dillon. Yeah. And he said it was like um, talking about how much fun just having you and some of that. I'll tell you some of the stuff about making everybody bring their mattresses. We out all in had the hall. sleep outs out in the hall. <laughs> I'll tell you, Jess Martin, I had all football players, Jess Martin, who went to the NFR so many times, a great bronc rider, but he was a great athlete. The other guy that was on that floor that people know is the head football coach at Montana state, Jeff Choate. Now, really same group of guys. Yeah. Yeah. It was an all-star cast, yeah. but I, I think we parallel a little bit in that you, you didn't dive right in. Like you didn't, 
start as a saddle bronc rider and a bull rider in high school and think, I'm going to go to the NFR one day. That's the impression I get that you were like, yeah, yeah I'll give this a go for a couple of years. And that's how I was. I think it helped my career in that I didn't have these glorious expectations. So I wasn't impatient. Yeah. I just kind of chipped away. And when it happened, it happened. And then I appreciated it. You exactly. seem like you were a little the same way. You weren't real sure you were all in on this. Well, I enjoyed it. And, and I think, you know, I had early success like riding bulls. And mm-hmm. I tried every event. I think saddle bronc riding was the last event I tried in rodeo. Um, but I just enjoyed it, and I had success, you know. But I never even imagined you could make a career out of it. Right. That, like was, just, that was me, too, yeah. And it wasn't until college that I actually realized that. And it, I can tell you the, the very moment we were coming back from Helena, and we were on the – it was like a people mover bus. And Rod Hay was there. And – Another interesting deal with Ike. So I was really wanting to learn how to ride Bronx, you know. And he had a bunch of these little mean bulls we were getting on there out of a, a bull of his and a far bull called bull Budweiser. And every practice I'd get hooked and stomped on. Like bulls, I could draw the tamest, friendliest bull in the herd, and he would hunt me down and just stomp on me. So I asked Ike, and we always had to get on bulls first. So I'd you know, end up getting stomped on. Well, then you're crippled getting on Bronx and I'm really wanting to learn how to ride Bronx. So I asked Ike, I'm like, can I, can we just ride Bronx first at practice? No. Well, he says, as a matter of fact, he said, from now on, you can only get on as many Bronx as you get on bulls. That's so Ike. Yeah. And so he says, I recruited you as the bull rider and I recruited Rod as, as the Bronx rider. So you need to ride bulls. <laughs> so if you, if you wanted to ride six Bronx one day or five, you had to ride yeah, and generally at practice, I'd get on three or four three, bulls yeah. and then be able to get on three or four Bronx. But anyway, we we're coming back from uh, Helena. And so Rod showed up, and like he was a stud. He won every single, yeah. he was only there half the year. He won every single rodeo that spring in the Bronx ride and ended up winning like third in the nation that, that year. And uh, I ended up getting crippled with couple of rodeos left i was at uh glendive brookman's had the stock and i got on a bronc he must have shot me like 30 foot in the air <laughs> and i come down and twisted an ankle really bad and then had to turn out of like the last two so that kind of ended my first year of college but we were coming back from helena and ike at the time like he rode phenomenal his dad rode bronx and he knew that that was his path mm-hmm and I had never been around anybody like that before. And we were coming back, and we actually won that rodeo. And Rod and I were the only two guys to place. I won the bull ride in both rounds. And uh, I think I won one round of the bronc ride, and then second in the other. Rod was the other way. He won a, the other round, won second. We won first and second in the average, and we won the team deal. So we are on our way back. And uh, Ike was driving to begin with. Rod wanted to stop and get some beer. And Ike's like, no. Wait, Rod Hay from Canada yeah. wanted to drink beer? That's odd. Ike's <laughs> like, we're in, we're in the college van, you know, you're not, we're not stopping to get beer. <laughs> Rod's like, we just won the rodeo. Like, surely we should get some beer. So Ike's like, no, we don't get, I don't think we'd even made it to uh, Townsend on the way back. And I Which gets, for the people watching, that's 26 miles. Yeah, I yeah. gets pulled over and gets a ticket for speeding. <laughs> and he had forgot his wallet. So we're in Montana. He's driving a like a college Wyoming plated vehicle. He's got no driver's license. So he was in the <laughs> police car forever till they got it all sorted back. And they give him like $5 tickets, you know, and he comes back. And that's what he was maddest about. He's like, that cost me an hour. It was like $5. He's like, I would have paid, I'd have paid him 50 me, just to let me, me go. Here's 50. Let me drive fast all the way across your state. Yeah. So the rest of the way home, somebody else had to drive. And Rod and Ike and I sat in the back of that van. And uh, Rod was just quizzing him because he had been in the NFR before. Yeah. Like he had kind of. In multiple events, if I remember right. Yeah. Bareback yeah. riding and saddle bronc yeah. riding. And then his brother rode all three events yeah. Yeah. And, and went to the NFR. But Rod just like picked his brain the whole time, you know, about this rodeo deal. And, and 
Rod knew he was headed down that path. And it was the first time that I ever sat back and thought that you can try to make a living or, mm-hmm. or, or make that kind of your career path. And it, I mean, it was, it was huge for me. It really, I mean, that light bulb just kind of went off. It was mm-hmm. kind of a neat experience for me, kind of being the fly on the wall, sitting back, listening to that conversation. Yeah. I remember mine too with Lloyd Ketchum. And he said, you know, you're doing pretty good. Really? <laughs> you know, just, yeah. he said, you know, there's guys make 70 grand a year doing this. And I went, that was unfathomable blah, 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 to me. I mean, I was making eighteen thousand dollars a year teaching to float out seventy grand. I mean, that'll inspire you. Yep. <laughs> we so don't I do would, it. Yeah. When you called it, when when you or I got contacted to do this with you, um, you know, I just brought back kind of memories and yeah. stuff of the, of the rodeo deal. And, yeah. And there were several several memories of you, but like a couple of my best. The first one was we were in Livermore, California. Uh huh. And it was what it was probably your second year. Yeah, I mean when you when you came on into the PRCA, you went big quick. Um, so I'm standing on the back of the shoots. It might have been your second year. Yeah, yeah. it couldn't have been your first. I no, it was. It took a couple to. Yeah. So I'm standing on the back of the shoots. I don't even know what was what event or what was going on. I think you were doing an act. Uh-huh. But I'm standing on the back of the shoots and I'm visiting with this committee guy. We're just sitting there visiting, and pretty soon and. Livermore is a cool rodeo. I, you know, I like yeah. that rodeo. But across the way, there's one grandstand. Huge straight, covered grandstand. And it's, yeah. a, it's a straight line grandstand, and it is packed. Holds like about 11,000 people. Every time I've ever been to that rodeo, like not a mm-hmm. empty seat. So you're out there doing an act. And pretty soon, and I'm visiting with this committee guy, and we, and pretty soon, like we're both, like our conversation just stops and we're watching you. And I look and Every person in that grandstands was standing up. Really? Yep. Everyone. You sure it wasn't the national anthem? No. <laughs> and I, I look at this committee guy, and we're both just like in awe. And I'm like, if you're going to put a rodeo on, how could you not hire that guy right huh. there? And that was my first time I thought, my gosh, like you, I realized how good you were huh. and, and how much you brought – to the sport of rodeo. Huh. I mean, because you probably see this, but like when you come from Montana and everybody's right. around you, I don't think they really appreciate you. Um, I've, uh, people, I get asked a lot about, oh, your town must have a sign on the edge of town. No. Yeah. There, <laughs> the, uh, I've said it a lot right now in the world of bull riding. I've said it, people are critical of Jess Lockwood. Well, they don't have any idea how good he is. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And and I think People that from is from the state of Montana. From the state of Montana, yes. I, I, that's funny. And that isn't a. It's not a slam. It's just I think sometimes we beat down our own to keep us all humble, even humble, or, well, or even, or, or even. Yeah, I mean. it, it, but I, how often do you get? Well, your head's big enough. You don't need to hear it from me. No, I would love to hear it from you. That's yeah. So well, it, was, it was cool. And then another one. So that time, you know, I was visiting with this committee guy, and mm-hmm. then the second memory that I that I come to of you was at Ellensburg, and it was one of your oh yeah first years, and it was the first time I ever saw the, the crocodile the hunter. snake deal. I knew you were going to say that, <laughs> and so it's during the bronc ride, you know. Yeah, oh yeah, and the and you're the crocodile hunter, and you're out there hunting snakes which turned out to be the flank strap, you know? Yeah. So you had to do it during a horse riding event because right. that's the only time the flank strap. Always the bronc ride. I always did it during the bronc yeah, ride. That was the first time I had ever seen it. And the everybody is on the back of the chutes. Like you couldn't, <laughs> and it, <laughs> the roadie almost stopped. Yeah. Because the, and they truly did. Like they slowed down the bronc Yeah, the bronc ride, ride and slowed down, yeah. Because you were out there doing this act and you couldn't, there was no room on the back of the chutes to even get on a bucket of horse because everybody's back there watching your I'm act. Trying, and it was hilarious. I'm trying to think who at Cliff. That he Cliff wore Norris. Cam, Cliff Norris that wore camo. Yep. And he came and got in on the yep. on the deal and <laughs> and killed the snake. Like he helped me. Yeah. He got off his saddle bronc, yep. off the pickup man and came across the arena. And so was that the first time you ever did that? No, I had done it at it's Reno. The, and it was somebody had told me. Somebody, I was standing back there. There's somebody from Montana, and I'm like, like we're all in stitches. I'm like, that is, like it was a funny thing. 
I'd ever yeah. seen. And that somebody that's from Montana is like, oh, he's done that. I've seen that act before. Because I've never seen <laughs> it. I'm like, I've never, I have never <laughs> seen that act before. Like, that is awesome. Uh, oh, I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's fun. We're just going to end this with him giving me compliments. No, no. Um, I don't know if we, there's a track to be on, but you went to Montana state, had great success at Montana state. Um, I, I got to ask you, you are, you are in the, the Bobcat athletic hall of fame. I am at yeah. Montana the blue, state. The blue, I got the blue and gold award. Ro oh, right. For, okay. Um, so you got to confirm if this is true. They, the, the year you went, and got put in the Hall of Fame, you went to a football game. Yep. I had heard that was the first Bobcat football game you it had was. ever been to. Yep. Is that true? It is You've true. You've been to yeah. one Bobcat football game, or have you gone to another one now? I think I went back to one other one. So you, two. you were at Montana State two years. Three in. years. Took me three years. Took you three yeah. years. Two and a half. Yeah. But. And never went to a football game. No. Just no interest. Uh, no interest. And, in, and I rode, I was rodeoing hard. Right. I, I think that's I mean, what we probably forget is if you weren't at a college rodeo, you, you were I going. I was rodeoing. So my first year at Bozeman, I actually made the NFR. Mm -hmm. It was my rookie year in 1990. Yeah. So, um, like I was busting it. Yeah. So I you had school. That, school yeah. plus, you know, I went to the winter rodeos, so I'm going back and forth. Yeah. Um, and it was, and I look back, it's interesting. I look back. Um, at my grades because I had to get my transcript. Uh -huh. I was a coach down in Powell for a while. Oh, right. Yeah. And I had to get transcripts from Bozeman. And just, you know, I was looking back through them, and my best grades were when I was rodeoing the hardest. Well, you probably had to focus. Yeah. You were so focused on everything you were doing that when you When you're there, man, you're just laser focused. Right. I yeah. mean, when you're what? gone rodeoing. So when you yeah. are there, you're you're that focused. But – it was a time when I wasn't rodeoing hard. Well, sure. Time, on your, <laughs> you time on your hands. You have time on your hands. I tell, I tell my kids, if you stay busy, it's contagious. Yeah. And that's when you're focused. Yeah. So, well, I won't make fun of you so bad about being, not going to a football game. Or you're sinking. My <laughs> there you now. go. Um, but you, didn't you wrestle in high school? I, I mean, did. you were a in sports guy. Yeah. yeah. Were you good? Uh, I was de decent, but not, no. I was varsity at senior. Um, and I ended up not wrestling my senior year because I broke an ankle riding bull oh, okay. at Absarchy. Um, well, and that's there. I've always given an advantage in the rodeo business to cowboys who did other sports. And I, I just thought, wrestling was, I mean, I know the Garrett's, there's a lot of guys that wrestled yeah. and were very successful at it, you know? Right. It, like I never won the state or nothing in wrestling. It, I was varsity and, I placed at state before, but I wasn't. You know, we just brought up Jess Lockwood. Ryan, Mas Ryan, Ryan Mapston was a great wrestler yeah. and in college too. In college, yeah. You know, and Je we just brought up Jess Lockwood. He was a state champion wrestler. I think it creates a mentality of how to win, how to compete, how to work out. Yeah. And um, it's an individual sport. Right. I was a basketball player, but <laughs> I hated wrestling. Thus, here I am. I'm a talker. So um, that, but the, you made it. Your rookie year, you made it to the NFR. Then you didn't the next year. Yeah. That's a hard, to me, I would think, oh, I've made it. Let's go. And the next year to not make it, that had to be a kick in the guts a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. Wake up call, maybe. It was huge. And I never realized it till later. Yeah. So that, that would have been 91. I actually took that winter semester off and went down to the winter rodeos. Because after my rookie year, I thought, man, this is easy, you know. Like I can go down and make money. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. I always say it's easy. I've seen it on TV. Yeah. It's a shoot. So I yeah. went to the winter rodeos and took one semester off. And I think I won like 2000, probably spent 10. Oh yeah. And I came back to Bozeman, with my tail between my legs and uh, got back enrolled in school. Yeah. And that's when I made, and I rodeoed, like I rodeoed harder that year. I went to more rodeos because my rookie year, I only went to like 72 rodeos or something. So huh. I bet the next year I went to over 90 and I wasn't even in the hunt to make the huh. finals. And it wasn't until. Why? Why? Looking what? back, yeah. I didn't ride good enough. Huh. I mean, I think it's, it's that deal. Like I, th I think, so I made myself a promise then that if I stuck college out, got my degree, 
I'd give myself a couple years mm -hmm. to go and make a go of it and see if I could do this. And it wasn't until that that I was, you know, out there going hard and out of college that I looked back and realized I didn't deserve right. to go to the finals in 91. I always thought on that, I gave myself a couple of years. I liked when you, when you said it, when I first came around and you all watched, I thought it was easy being the new guy because nobody expected anything here. Who's this new guy? Oh, cool. Yeah. To me, it was way harder later in my career doing rodeos. Keep when, fresh. Yeah. You, you went from, Oh my God, who's the new guy to, Oh, entertain us. I mean, you, the mentality of the crowds change because they expect, expect you every funny. time, yeah. you know, so I, I'm the same way. I gave it a couple of years and then I look back and, and it forced me to, I got to work hard at this. I, I mean, a similar take, I think between you and me on, on that, yeah. where, I mean, of course I never missed an NFR once I went, but <laughs> oh, it, it's interesting I mean, the longer you're around rodeo, the more you know, and, and you yeah. start viewing rodeo from all the different aspects, Right. you know, not only as a contestant, but you, you start looking at it from the committee's point of view and from the fans point right. of view and everybody. So another po time, point or time where I was at the Nile Rodeo in Billings and, and I had just signed a contract with DeWalt, like I was mm. one of the original yeah. DeWalt guys. So me, Mark Garrett, Clint Brunger. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of the, so DeWalt was owned by Black and Decker, but a bunch of the big wig marketing guys from DeWalt had flown into Billings uh, because this, you know, the, the deal they had signed with us. And you were performing there. And I think it might have been the first time you did the, the boneless chicken <laughs> or the first time I had seen the boneless chicken. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, oh, I did that all kinds of times, yeah. I was sitting with, with that group of uh, DeWalt guys and they're, they're marketing guys. So they're, they think marketing, you know, always. Yeah. And, and we're watching the rodeo and stuff and Clint, Clint Wassum, I believe was the guy's name, but he was like the head guy that signed our contracts and he was an older guy, but kind of the head of the DeWalt marketing deal. And he's watching the rodeo and he kept looking back and he's like, so tell me about this guy, this guy down here, you know, we're watching the rough stock end and you're out doing stuff. And keep, what? what do you know about that guy? I'm like, that's Flint, you know, like. You and I never got a DeWalt no contract. What? I thought you did. Didn't you wear a DeWalt for a while? Mm -mm. Because Clint Wassum says pretty soon he just flat out. She's like, that's the guy I want. Huh? No, I never did. But do you have his number? <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm still going, man. <laughs> that The first year at the NFR, when we signed that deal yeah. and uh, I got on a horse, oh, it was a great big bay of Ike's. Classic, or I can't remember the horse's name, but anyway, she flips in the chute, and I'm so I'm winning the world, coming in winning the world, and uh, that horse flips and squishes me like I never got out of the way of my swells, and she separates some ribs, and I mean it was painful. I had to go the rest of ten days, but they pull me out of the chutes, and you know I gather myself back together, and they put me back on because I'm the last guy that couldn't roll to nobody else, so they you know I make a ride. And after the deal, the DeWalt guys are like, that was, that was so great. awesome. It was a minute and 37 seconds. They timed it. Uh, and yeah. the camera was on you. Like, they if love you that. could do that every night. Yeah. And I'm like. They know the value. Why? They yeah. know the value per whatever. But that's, yeah. that was the deal. with. And when he said that, he's like, that's the guy I want. And the reason is because you're there the whole time. Like, I'm out there for eight seconds ride. Yeah. And what, another 10 to get back to the shoot. So I got, you know, totally maybe 30 seconds of value Yeah. To a, in marketing terms. Yeah. There's people. As that, a contestant. They know the value of, yeah. And then, and then there's <laughs> Flint, and he's out there, like, the whole time. And I knew we need to spread the word on that. <laughs> um, a couple things. When you won the world all-around title in 1997, did Ty Murray push you a little to do that he, that year? Was he hurt that year? What was... It I don't was, mean, not with all due respect, yeah. where was Ty Murray <laughs> yeah, that <okay>. year? <laughs> <laughs> he, he had called me a few, few times because the, the deal was, it was actually the third year in a row Ty was hurt. R yeah, he had some long-term, yeah. Yeah, and he kept getting hurt riding bulls, and it was like a knee, 
And then he came back, and then it was the other knee, and then he came back, and it was an elbow or something. And I think he needed one more title to to break the yeah because it came a couple years after you or the next several yeah. it was the year after I won it is right. when he won his his last break. one yeah yeah and uh, so the first two years he was hurt Joe Beaver won the all around yes and I won more money riding Bronx than Joe than won than Joe won in the all around in the all around so I'm getting this call from Ty <laughs> like Dan. Crack your bull rope out. Hey, Dan, come on, man. Come on, you come know, on, get it you, back to our Come on, end. you effer. Yeah. <laughs> so how long had it been since you've been on a bull? Like five years. So I quit riding bulls in 1992 um, after I got out of college. And like I, w- I still wasn't in the hunt, really. And I was actually at Cheyenne, Wyoming. And uh, that's where Rod Hay and I kind of reconnected. The guy he was traveling with, Chris Anderson, who's got a son that's doing really well too, had just broke a leg. So Rod was by himself. And uh, Rod said, We need to like just enter up and go and go hard. So that's that's what how Rod and I got mm. uh, hooked up. So when when I did that, I quit riding bulls. So that was oh, like gotcha. the end of 92. 92 yeah. And I think that year. Like in January of that year, I won the Montana circuit ride in Bronx and Bulls both. Right. So it wasn't that I wasn't, you know, doing well. I guess I would had been doing well, but Bulls just always kept me beat up. Yeah. So it had been like because you got years. run over by the gentlest once. I did, as yeah. you pointed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my my back was always sore and stuff. So it had been five years um, before, since I had been on a bull, oh. and it's amazing. Like when you're when you're riding bulls all the time and you're 18 years old or whatever, 21 years old, <laughs> like you're invincible and you don't really, I don't think you watch the wrecks and you don't really yeah. see how dangerous it is. How many times a hoof lands like right there, there. Or there and you quit riding for five years and you start watching it and you're like, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? And then you enter back up and yeah. it's like, what am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> did it feel good? I mean, did was it like riding a bike? Did you relearn? Did you? Um, There's a I lot on, of former bull riders out there. <laughs> I got on seven head that year. I, I rode every one. Placed on six of them. Yeah, and, because to, to for, so people, because we were talking about this, you, to be eligible to win the all around, you have to win how much? 3,500? 3, 3,000. 3,000 in another event. Yeah. And you won, how much did you win riding bull? A little over nine. So, But I quit when I won that three. Three, yeah. I quit entering. But you had already entered. But I had already entered, like, and I don't know what I was thinking. I entered Moses Lake, which is a flying, flying yeah, five. And they, that's when they that's had to. dumb. Yeah. But I, so it and Walla Walla were my last two. I split. I split. <laughs> Moses Lake That's and I won I won Walla Walla and <laughs> so Walla Walla, Walla I had little, Labor Day I had yeah. one of uh uh Donnie Kish's one of them cool little brindles that aren't yeah. very big and they're just getting it and I jumped off and landed on my feet and was like oh I need to quit doing this because that was fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's when I, it started I knew I'm like, to, yeah. And then I ended up getting on a few the next year and, and didn't do very well. So huh, interesting. But, and, and Ty was back. Yeah. So what's the point, right? <laughs> yes. What was um, the point? So a couple of things to just think about. I have brought this up when I was doing a radio show. It's a heated discussion in a lot of circles of mine. You went, you went in the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame 2009? Oh, nine? Yes. 2009. Yes. Pro, uh, Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. I want your thoughts on this because I'm sure you have friends. Well, I know one for sure. One of the qualifications to be in the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame is you have to have been a world champion. I have argued uh, for a long time that I don't think that should be I don't think that should be something that needs to be to be in the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. I, I think there are people in the Hall of Fame that don't deserve it as much. Rod Hay went to the NFR 20 times. I know. And you're telling me he's yeah. not a Hall of Famer? I, I thought of, and, I was. And so Glenn O'Neill. Glenn O'Neill. Is his brother-in-law. Yes. And and I 
both went into the hall, and Rod deserves every bit as much, if not more, to go into the hall. I completely agree, and that's then, not taken from you. No, that's, it's yeah. not. But, I, I mean, he he was a class act. He still is a class act. Yeah. He's still great for rodeo. He still does a lot. Um, his contribution to the sport yeah, completely. deserves that, yeah. in, in my opinion. Yeah, and that is a criteria. Uh, you know, and I was looking at your uh, – Cody DeMoss has been the runner-up to the world like five times and been to the NFR how many times, you know. Yeah. Uh, the one we think of in our family, there's not a better cow bo- cowgirl in the world than Lisa Lockhart. Yeah. She may realistically never win a world title. You're telling me she's not a Hall of Famer? I thought Lisa won the world. She has never – she's never won the world title. See, yeah, but she, I thought but, she did a few years ago. But oh. that, there's an indicator of what you think of Lisa Lockhart. Oh, yeah. She's a champ. Rod Lyman, one of the yeah. greatest bulldoggers ever. I mean, and it, going back to that, like Rod, he was he was such a great inspiration to me. Number one, he, he taught me a lot about riding Bronx. Uh-huh. He was the first one that taught me about my saddle, my equipment, uh-huh. and stuff when we were there at Powell. But just some of his little sayings and and his philosophy. Yeah. And I was talking with Maury Tate the other day Mm -hmm. and Rod's going to go down and put on a school down with Cody Knight Row. You were supposed to. And he's like, Maury says, I've never met that guy before, but he just met him at the NFR (laughs) last year. He says, I'm pretty sure he's never had a bad day in his life. (laughs) Unreal. Isn't it? (laughs) But he was so positive. Yeah. Well, you got to be positive when your feet are this long. His feet are this big, Dan, aren't they? (laughs) But uh, one of his one of his deals was so we're you know it was kind of early so we started traveling in '92 and we went hard that fall because mm-hmm. he had broke his leg off and should have killed him in '91 early in '91 he was winning the world by a long ways and he broke his leg it was a compound fracture he laid behind the chutes all night long they never found him till the next morning it was an accident. Um, and should have killed him. And he had to relearn. I mean, he was out of the sport for a year. Hmm. Pretty much had to learn, relearn how to walk, relearn how to ride Bronx. So in 92, we hooked up again. And I mean, he was st- still had, I don't think he ever regained his. What he was. What he was. Yeah. You know, as great hmm. as his career was. Um, but when we started traveling, we just went s- full out as hard as you could rodeo. From when we hooked up for several years there, and that's when I, you know, I won my first world title in '93, and we were first and second pretty much all year long. Yeah. And but one of his deals, um, we were just talking about goals and kind of what where we need to get, and his his point was we need to be the guys that you don't even have to look at the at the roster going in the NFR, you just know these certain guys are going to be there. Always. And at the time it was like a Dwayne Danes. Yeah. It was a Kent Cooper, Butch Small. That was before you. That was, that that was the guys, the the ones that he looked, that that's what you thought of. We just thought of Clint Clint Johnson, Brad Germanson. Yeah. They would have been even a little, little before me, but at the time it was them guys that or Billy up bar. I mean, of course later, like you didn't even have to look at the standings, and that's kind of what what Elisa Lockhart or mm-hmm. and, and they're just going to be. And we did bec- we did become that. I think. Yeah. You know, Rod went to the NFR twenty times or yeah. whatever. Um. Do you what do you miss? I. There's certain I don't think people understand. I always use the Brett Favre analogy when Brett Favre was going to retire and he kept putting it off three, four years and people just torched him. Yeah. And I'd say, you, you don't understand. You don't just walk away, walk away and not think about it anymore. But I don't know that <clears throat> I think a lot about what I will miss. Cause I'm on the downhill side of my career, of course, but I don't know. I think, I don't know that people who don't do some sort of either entertainment business compete uh, in a pro sport, they don't understand the pull and what you will miss. Do I, I, here's my, do you miss actually getting on good buck and horses as much as you miss the talks with Rod? Hey, stuff like that. You miss all of it. Yeah, you truly do. And it's, um, 
Like it was difficult for me. I think anybody who, and it, it doesn't even have to just be sports, but yeah. definitely any sports athlete. So I dedicated myself to rodeo from the time I was about 11. Mm-hmm. I mean, it to, to accomplish, you know, what I was able to. Right. Like you eat it, you drink it. That's it. Just drives you. That it consumes you, and that's what you do. That is you. So from the time I was eleven till two thousand and six, I was about I don't know what how old I was when I quit. Thirty nine, thirty nine, thirty eight, thirty nine. Yeah, somewhere in there. I mean, yeah. that w- that was me. It was my identity. It was ever mm-hmm. it just consumed me, and and it was my body that told me I was done. I mean, it yeah, wasn't my brain. It, your my, body starts to dictate. My body things. was done. Yeah, and and it's hard. I mean, you, it's you're done. Mm-hmm. Then what? Yeah. <laughs> fishing. Yeah, kids and fishing. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I just, I totally had to to remove myself from the sport for about at least two years. Yeah, more like three. Before I could even like re-enter, I mean, it was it was difficult. I see guys that retire and then they're right back around, going every year, going to watch. And I always thought that it would be hard. Be hard. I uh, are you a rodeo fan now? Do you go out of your way? Do you do you care if you go watch a rodeo? I don't. I don't go to many rodeos. I go down. Yeah. I actually go down to Powell or to Cody to the Powell Wyoming College practices. I go down and, and help or coach all the bronc riding practices. Really? And and I like seeing that next generation. Yeah. I, I really do. And it gives me hope in this day and age because I, I think rodeo has a bright future, and it's because of the kids that are involved mm-hmm. in it, you know? And then seeing, like, Dawson – Who's Dawson young and, and he's excited? He baby and, faced like his dad was. Yeah, the same. Yeah. Or even Jess when he come, Jess Lockwood when yeah. he come around. Like that to me is awesome. Like seeing them young guys, or even in college, but really good individuals in today's day and age. Mm-hmm. Not, it, I mean, it gives you hope not just for rodeo but for everything. It, it truly does, yeah. and um. That's what I enjoy seeing. Yeah. So I only go to a few rodeos. Um, I usually go to Red Lodge for a perf. Yeah. And over oh, the last few years, my wife and kids and I will go up, and we actually, it's a day of slack. We'll go up. I go to Costco and buy a bunch of meat, like ribs and tri-tips and sausage and stuff, and I'll go up and, and grill out for everybody, for the crew, that day, that first day of slack. And they'll all come over to Weefrich's trailer and Up there. and I get huh. to cook for everybody. I'll remember that. Yeah. I'm gonna remember it, that. So there's a few I you know, I enjoy going to the Cody Night Rodeo because yeah. you know it's I kinda sure. have ties. But that there, has you know. to do with the next generation. It does. Yeah. All um, of that ties to that. Yeah. So um, I go to, I mean I go to a few, but And that's probably a great I mean, it's great thoughts to end on, but I do want to ask you one more thing. Speaking of that next generation. You were able to retire from rodeo at 39 years old and live. Do people, do you educate young kids on if you rodeo like this and do this with your money, you can retire because that's really hard. It is really hard. Do you, I think, uh, I've been asked a lot, would you do a school? I said, if I did a school, most of the time would be spent on how to do business, how to do contracts, how to stick to your exactly. word. You could, I, I would think you could do well just talking to guys financially about and economics of it. And I was a coach down there for a year at Powell. And that was one of the things, because in my, in my opinion, rodeo, like riding Bronx is probably 30% riding ability. It's probably... 30% business ability and probably 40, at least 40% mental. Yeah. Like you've got to have your head in the game and, and be doing. And I saw a good quote the other day, like you compete from the neck down, but you win from the neck up. Mm. I, th- I thought that was That's a, good know, one. a really good yeah. quote. Um, and just, to me, after a few years, you know, one of my favorite things at, at a rodeo was everybody, the brown cried and 
we'd get done. You'd kind of hang around, put stuff away, watch a bull ride, and then everybody had to head to the beer stand. <laughs> and they'd go buy $7 beers or would draft beers that are warm and taste like crap. I always enjoyed going back to the stock contractor's trailer uh-huh. and sitting down and grabbing a beer off a, out of the ice full cooler. That somebody else bought. Well, no, no, actually. You, I, but I, you I contribute to, you fill the cooler. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially, you know, the, the ones I did that more, most around was like Grownies crew. They, well, I they really, always had a cooler at the stock trailer. Yeah. I, I, well, I most, spent, most talk, stock contractors yep. do, but I would show up with a 12 pack. Yep. It's, you know, towards the end of my career, I had a contract with Coors, but I'd always stop. <laughs> I'd always stop yeah. at uh, the store and I'd buy a 12 pack of beer. And I did that not just with, with Grownies, yeah. but I'd do it at other, you know, other guys. And I'd, and a 12 pack of beer cost, what, 10 bucks or something. Mm-hmm. It's like one warm draft beer at the beer stand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just, I'd show up to the rodeo and take that cold pack in and if the cooler wouldn't fit it, I'd just set it there, and if the cooler would fit it, you dump it in, and, and that's where I'd go and sit around and, and visit like this. Yeah. And I learned a lot doing that. I learned a lot, visiting. especially, yeah. Yeah. I did. And um, it's, you know, I always said when I got done, it, it felt like I went into a tornado, rodeo to me, like my career uh-huh. and stuff, because it just consumes you, and it's, it's like your life. And you're in this tornado, and, and mine was, I was in there for about 17 years. That's how long I rode you professionally. And when you're done, it's just like that tornado spits you out, and it just keeps it, going. It goes without you. It keeps going, and you're totally out of it. As soon as mm-hmm. you quit going, like you're out of the loop mm-hmm. instantly. Yeah. And, and it just goes on. And then it's, it's really hard readjusting to life because you come back to Billings and – like when you are on the trail rodeo and everywhere you go, the rodeo is in town. It's like their biggest weekend of the year. <laughs> it's just all so familiar. So you come yeah. home and you're, you're sitting at home and they're like, Oh, let's go out. You know, it's awesome. And, and you go out and you're like, uh, it's kind of dead. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's quiet. Yeah. It just isn't really, I mean, cause and you're nobody always, knows, and nobody knows who I am. And, <laughs> The other thing that that really hit me or I really noticed was every story I had was a band camp story. Yeah. Every one. <laughs> and it's like your, your third band camp story. And then this other time at the rodeo. Hey, and remember you, that one time? Remember that stories. one time and at the, the rodeo? The yeah. people here don't rodeo, the people you're going out with. And they just don't. And pretty soon they're just like. <sighs> and, I, and it was that first year when I, after I quit. I finally had to tell myself, I'm like, you can't tell band camp stories <laughs> one after another. You just can't. <laughs> so getting together with you and get, yeah, being able to visit, I mean, stories. we're just telling some band camp band stories. Camp stories. Yeah. And we don't need cameras to tell band camp stories. <laughs> and I'll let you cook for me, too. Yeah. So uh, listen, I appreciate it. It's, hey, you, uh, you know, in my mind, when we do sit downs like this, it's about band camp stories because there is. are people out there want to know band camp stories. So listen, um, I think about being our age and you are, I respect you for having the little kids. Good luck. Yeah. Is, and uh, I'm anxious Thank to you. see I, what, I, I I'm anxious to see what a little boy of yours turns out like. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the one I'm worried about is my oldest daughter. Mm. She's yeah, they're she's a oldest daughters. Spit. They're the worst. She's a spitfire. <laughs> like my little boy at it, and she's the one. Like if she wanted to, she could be a bronc rider. Mm-hmm. Like she is. I don't know if my little boy's got that. Yeah, we'll he's see. a little he's more a laid little. back yeah. and just he's yeah. not. It just doesn't he, have that personality. He could always sneak up on flanks like they're snakes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a, uh, well, thanks. And, and, I, yeah, and I, I hope your your career has been great. And I well, know thanks. that I know that rodeo lost a lot when when you went straight PBR. Well, and I mean uh it I know personally it wasn't enjoy wasn't as enjoyable as being able to watch you perform and you've done yeah. you've done a lot for the sport Thanks. rodeo and I mean you've done a tremendous amount for the PBR but appreciate it. Yeah. We'll do this again sometime. Yeah. All right. Dan Mortensen, everybody. Thanks, buddy. You bet. Thank you, Flint. <laughs>